Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, on Monday, the Trump administration released its budget proposal for fiscal year 2021. It was titled, A Budget for America's Future. But its vision for that future is bleak. Its vision of the future is the true American carnage that President Trump described in his inaugural address. It envisions an America that is less than it can or should be. It envisions an America where working families are left to struggle while the wealthy continue to prosper. Rather than expanding economic opportunity to all, it would force families to choose between food and other essentials by cutting nutrition assistance by $182 billion so that more children and more people would go hungry in America, the richest nation on the face of the earth. And it would completely eliminate the Community Development Block Grant, which helps local communities keep millions out of poverty. Rather than ensuring health care is accessible to all, this budget cuts Medicaid by $900 billion and slashes Medicare by half a trillion dollars, even though the President promised he would never touch the program's funding from that podium just a few days ago. It would also cut research into life-saving cures at the National Institute of Health by $3.3 billion. Penny wise, pound foolish. And it cuts the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention by more than half a billion dollars at a moment when we need to protect our people against the uh, coronavirus and other public health threats. Mr. Speaker, a true budget for America's future wouldn't increase the cost of attending college, as this budget does, by cutting student loan programs by $170 billion. The education of our young people is our greatest investment in a successful future. And this budget discourages those who want to serve their communities by eliminating the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. It wouldn't slash the Department of Edu it would slash the Department of Education's budget by 5.6 billion this year alone, while eliminating after-school programs for kids. Kids would be less safe, less educated. Ignoring another of his pledges, this time on infrastructure, President Trump's budget proposes cutting the Department of Transportation by 13% this year and reducing funding for the Army Corps of Engineers by 22%, both agencies that deal with infrastructure. It proposes a future devoid uh, of innovation, as well eliminating several programs that fund and promote research and innovation to support advanced manufacturing, new energy technologies, and entrepreneurship. On all of those, the President's budget sounds the trumpet of retreat. And this budget promotes a future that is less secure by reducing funding for public diplomacy and foreign aid. For three years now, uh, and in our fourth year, our public diplomacy has been put at risk. Moreover, this budget extends the 2017 tax cuts for the wealthy while once again asserting the debunked and discredited theory that the tax cuts pay for themselves. They didn't do it in 1981. They didn't do it in 2001 and 2003, and they haven't done it now. <clears throat> the evidence is clear. <clears throat> the president's tax cuts for the wealthy did not provide the trickle-down benefits he promised or give our economy the kind of boost he said that it would. Yet the administration is back again, promoting the notion that if we give tax cuts for the wealthy one more try, they will produce growth well above what every 
mainstream economist projects, period. This budget is not a serious proposal, nor is it fiscally sustainable. Budgets are about priorities. <clears throat> the priorities in this budget, giving tax cuts to the wealthy while cutting the programs that help working Americans get ahead, are the wrong priorities for our nation. Now, Mr. Speaker, there's a lot of talk about uh, who's going to offer a budget. The President's offered a budget, and we've offered a budget. And that budget, Mr. Speaker, was incorporated in the appropriation bills signed by the President of the United States. And we now have a, an agreement on what the level of discretionary expenditures will be. So I want to tell my friends, uh, uh, not only on the Republican side of the aisle, but I want to tell uh, everybody in America, we have a budget. We've set forth our priorities. And those priorities were in the bills that we passed last year and the President signed. The marginal increase in those is very, very small this year. That was the deal that was made between Secretary Mnuchin and Speaker Pelosi. And we will pass our appropriation bills consistent with those priorities that we have already articulated at the numbers agreed upon, unlike the President of the United States who sent us a budget that completely abandoned the agreement we made in July, just eight months ago, seven months ago. What's the point of making an agreement if uh, it's looked at as a ceiling and you can do anything about It's like going and bargaining on a house and saying, I'll pay you $100,000 and then coming to the uh, settlement table and say, well, I'm really going to pay you 90000 That 100000 was just a ceiling. Mr. Speaker, we're going to pass through this House, send to the Senate appropriation bills that will represent the priorities of the American people. And that budget will be for the people. I am hopeful that uh, one more time we can adopt those priorities have them signed by the President, and have no drama about shutting down government, as we did not this past year. That is our responsibility. That is our duty to the American people. And I yield back the balance of my time.